Hello, everyone. My name is Tracy Siska. I'm executive director and founder of the Chicago Justice Project. Thank you so much for your interest in our internship program. I started the organization a little over 14 years ago now to liberate data from justice agencies, to then be able to take that data, turn it into useful information for communities and public, uh, public policy people, policymakers, reform advocates. We now have, through our transparency efforts, we now have more data on a single justice system than pretty much anyone in the country and maybe anyone in the world, actually. What does that include? It includes uh, metadata on 55 million calls for service. It includes 7 million uh, data on 7 million crime incidents going back to 1999. It includes seven years of felony prosecution data. It includes um, data from the Cook County Sheriff's Office, data from the Illinois Department of Corrections. All of that's in the mix in our warehouses now. How do we do that? We do that through uh, the transparency part of our organization. We use uh, what Illinois is called the Freedom of Information Act, what in other parts of the country are called open records laws. We use those to set up litigation and then we sue for access. And hopefully, and not too successful on this, we're trying to sue so that no one ever has to sue again and we are setting the standard for what data is available or should be available. This is kind of sort of worked in some parts, some it hasn't worked. We are in our um, three years in the litigation against the Chicago Police Department. We are on our second lawsuit with the state's attorney. We are setting up our second lawsuit with the 911 Center, the Office of Emergency, Man Emergency Management and Communications. We are in the process of setting another six or seven lawsuits or filing them in the next three to four months for transparency just in Chicago now. When I say just in Chicago, we've expanded our work. We have already started our transparency efforts in the District of Columbia with the Washington Lawyers Committee. We are moving to Maryland and probably Virginia also. And with the help of the American Constitutional Society with a big project this summer, we'll be expanding to multiple cities around the country. Um, some of them are just gonna be the largest cities in the country, but some specific cities are being targeted um, specifically because of issues around killing unarmed young black people. So that, um, and sometimes not so young. So that is going to be uh, Louisville, Kentucky's on that list for Breonna Taylor, Minneapolis for George Floyd, Cleveland for um, Tamir Rice and others. There's also one, Columbus, Ohio's on that list, South Bend is on that list because they've had issues with policing. So there's gonna be a bunch of smaller jurisdictions we're targeting. And then we're gonna include in that mix some large cities we hope to be expand to at least 10 jurisdictions by the end of the summer. So speaking of George Floyd, since that time, our the interest in volunteering for us and interest in internships has skyrocketed. So we started another wing of the organization called CJP Nation. Right now, that nation has 150 people from around the country and some international working with us on what are they working on? Crowdsource research projects. Uh, being social media ambassadors, legislative advocacy, which we have an ordinance in the city where hopefully have a hearing on in the next three or four weeks as I record this um, near the end of March in 2021. Um, direct advocacy, where so we're going to start more direct av advocacy going towards the justice agencies to force them to open and hopefully put public pressure so we don't have to sue. And then fundraising helps support both our social media show we have going, but just the organization as a whole, we survive basically um, on a very small budget. You're looking at the staff. So um, your help and your joining as a volunteer or as an intern is really vital to what we do. So let me give you a little more information on what interning for CJP is like. The reason I brought up the nation is because most interns now will come in and be either lead or be a part of, of uh, larger projects um, in part with the nation. So whether that's fundraising or doing running a crowdsource research project or taking over a, a social network for us, that's all going to be part um, of the internships as part of the nation. So you're most likely going to be working with a group and it's most likely going to be a mixture between interns and volunteers. Now for hours. In the summer, we 
require that interns spend 15 to 20 hours working for us during the semester or quarter, depending on the school you're at. Um, it's 12 to 15. All of that is negotiable um, depending on your, your, oblig your other obligations. We're, we're happy to work with people. Also, if you're gonna take this for credit, uh, either way, credit or non-credit is fine with us. If it's for credit, we'll abide by the school's uh, guidelines and requirements. All the hours are virtual. So the only really obligations you have for like what, what hours you're working, doing the work specifically is when you have Zoom check-ins. You'll have, if you're working part of a group or leading a group, you're gonna have a check-in probably with the group. And then that group is most likely gonna have a check-in either once or at, once a week or once every other week with me or Sydney to just who runs our nation project to just see where you're at and make sure things are going, um, going along well. And if you have any questions, other than that, you can work the hours whenever you want. We're very flexible. We're more than willing, even if you're taking it for credit to allow like, Hey, I'm going away this week, especially now in 20, you know, March, 2021, we've all got shots. We're going to Europe or we're going to a family house, a second house, or we're going to a friend's place and I won't have internet access, whatever. We're fine. We'll work it out. It's not a problem. We're, we try to be as flexible as possible. Really appreciate the people donating their time, whether you're a volunteer or an intern, it's donating their time. We really uh, appreciate that. We want to try to be as flexible as possible. Two major issues that all my interns get lectures on, and you're going to get it through this video now. Two things, among many others, but obviously, but two real big problems we've had um, that will end internships. One is ghosting Zooms. Whether you're, ghost, whether you're checking in with your group or checking in with me, if you're working on a, a solo project, not showing up to those, that's, an, that's a deal breaker, right? And it doesn't mean, oh my God, I overslept on one. I forgot about one. I forgot to schedule it. That, no, obviously mistakes happen. No problem. Catch you on the next one. What we're talking about is routinely doing that. That's not going to be tolerated. It's disrespectful to me. It's disrespectful to your group. And we're just not going to allow that to happen. So we'll just end the internship, whether it's for credit or not, whether you're getting some kind of subsidy through your university or college, which is what we um, really strongly encourage students to look into. That's a growing thing for us is having interns get funding through their educational institutions, which is great because then you get paid to do work. Um, so that's one part that will be ghosting Zooms. Now, we communicate with our interns in between the check-ins and the groups communicate through Slack, an app, texting app called Slack. Five minutes before, especially if you're meeting with me, five minutes before uh, Zoom and you're like, oh my God, something came up. I can't make it. That's all I ask for. Um, not getting any communication about going to be missing one time fine, as I said, but multiple times not working. And here's the second part where you agree to, let's say over the summer, let's say you agree to 20 hours, I call you on a Thursday or Sydney does and says, hey, you know, Jack, what, or you know, Kathy, what, um, how many hours do you have for CJP left? Because we have a special project. And you say, well, I think I may have two left. I worked a bunch in the beginning of the week. Cool, well, we have this project. Do you think you might be able to do it? It's three out. It might take you three hours. The response, we don't, first of all, there's some perfectly good responses. I have plans, I have class, I've got to study for a test, I'm going out with family with dinner, we got tickets to some sporting event or a play because those that has become a thing again. Hey, fine, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it. What is not going to be um, looked upon positively is you saying, hey, I that's going to put me an hour over my limit. That's not a response we want to get. You're most likely, this is most likely never going to happen. Also in the previous weeks, all the weeks, we don't say, hey, can you please account for all the hours if you worked? Either the work is gonna get done or it's not. I don't wanna sit you know, and be a micromanager. I don't have the time. Sydney doesn't have the time. None of the group leaders have the time to make sure everyone's working every hour. It's about getting the work done and treating everyone with respect and as an adult. And if we just wanna be able to know that if that, something really comes up and whether we need something for the city council in Chicago or DC or Maryland or the New York Times or CNN, we can count on people if they have the availability to work that extra hour to get it done. It'll most likely never happen. It rarely ever does, but I want people that are going to come in that are committed and will 
uh, accommodate that where it is allowed on those rare and frequent times. Okay, so now that that is over, and if I haven't scared you away, we would really um, love to read your application for an internship with us. Um, we look forward to reviewing it. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us, but um, you know, fill out this form. We'll get back to you very quickly. We look forward to it. We rely so heavily on interns and volunteers to help us do our work. The, the nation is an incredible thing right now for us and 150 people strong and we're trying to grow it even stronger. And we're also bringing in training. So we're tra gonna just, this is March 2021 in over the next like four to six weeks, we're getting training on community organizing, recruiting volunteers on fundraising from high level donors. We're bringing in training. We want to um, give back to our volunteers as much as possible. So we're gonna try to bring in as part of the nation. Um, and so that'll be our interns and volunteers bring in training and develop skills um, beyond just what they're getting through the work they're doing for us. We want to give back a little bit because obviously we get a lot from all of your work. So thank you so much. I really look forward to reading your applications. Have a wonderful day.